Hi guys, that was really loud. Hi everybody, hope everybody is well. So today I'm here filming my September wrap up. Um, it was a very good reading month for me. I got through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books. So I'm very, very pleased with that. So, all right, I got through six books. One, one of them, I'm so prepared. One of them I read right at the end. I finished right at the end of August. So, and I don't think I did a wrap up for August um, because like I said, I kind of stopped filming videos and it's something I want to get back into. So um, I'm going to stick it here. So I read, um, finished at the end of August, Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. Um, and this follows the story of um, three sisters who um, they've got to kill each other so one can rule. It's happened for years. Um, as you can probably in, tell by my lacklustre intro there, I didn't really enjoy the book. Um, the second half I enjoyed more than the first half. Um, no spoilers, but um, I had an inkling right at the beginning of the book, like one, you know, and that inkling happened, which is fine. You know, I don't think it was meant to be a huge secret. I think most people probably figured it out. Um, and I was, but when it was like revealed, I was like, yes. But anyway, um, I'm not like shitting on it or anything because um, I think I think the idea is um, wonderful. Um, I think it's such a clever idea, and I um, and I really liked all of the characters. But I did find, because we're introduced to um, the three sisters quite quickly, you're also introduced very quickly to their cast of characters. So there was a lot of people to grasp hold of, um, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, um, the first half I was like, no, I'm not going to bother with the second book. By the time I got to the second half, I was like, I'll probably hire it from the library. But because I paid full price for this, which is very rare for me, um, I probably won't let it go just yet. Um, if I do, I'll probably sell it. Um, but um, so it was Marabella, Catherine and our, I can't pronounce it, Ars Arsinone. I don't know how you pronounce the last one, but um, Catherine and Arsi <laughs> were my favourites. Um, There's nothing wrong with Marabella, but I preferred the other two. Um, so yeah, that was Three Dark Crowns, and I know this is a much loved series, so, but there you go. Um, sorry, I'm up and down on my knees. Um, I got rid of the, not that you care, I'm just going to tell you, I got rid of the stand that my last couple of videos where I managed to put my laptop so I could stand. I've got nowhere else to put it, so we're sat back down. So, on to the official first book I read in September was When I Hit You by Mina Kandasame, and I think I butchered her last name, I'm really sorry. Um, so this book is um, awful, <laughs> not the the content is awful, <laughs> when I hit you. So um, we are following a young woman, um, Mina, um, I believe this happened to Mina. I didn't, I didn't, um, I assumed it did, um, I didn't look it up, but I'm pretty sure it's her life and how um, she meets a man and she marries said man and said man is an absolute wanker. Uh, that's the polite term I'd use for him. Um, but what I really, really loved, if you can say that, about this book was Mina's writing. Um, even in such hardship and horror, her love of writing is so absolute and it's what carries her through. And um, because I really enjoyed her writing, I picked up another one of her books, but I haven't brought it, haven't brought it to the table with me, um, which, if it mentions here, The Gypsy Goddess, and that's a fiction book. I wanted some of her poetry, but I can't find it anywhere. So, but I really, really did enjoy the writing, if not the actual content, but um, that's fine. I don't think you would enjoy the content, um, but... No, we're going to have to go back down. <laughs> These knees are too old. But um, I, I loved the writing, so I'm happy to pick up more from Mina. Sorry, I've got a bit winded. <laughs> the next book I read, <laughs> next book I read, read was The Age of Miracles by Karen Thompson Walker. Um, what else? This was her first book. Um, I think she has written another book, but I can't remember the name. I don't know. Anyway, The Age of Miracles is a dystopian kind of story. 
it says it on the back, so it's not like a spoiler, with a coming of age. So in regards to this story, um, time grows longer. So minutes start getting longer, hours start getting longer. And we kind of follow our main character, who is 11-year-old Julia, as everybody around her and herself comes to terms with what that means for um, mankind and for themselves. Um, it, it was a really good book. Um, and he had a few qualms with it. I think the one thing was there's some, um, some of the heavier stuff. I, I assume it was because it was done through an 11-year-old girl's eyes. Just kind of felt matter of fact. Um, and I thought they probably could have warranted a bit more. But that's just from my personal belief, really. Um, there's something that she witnesses in here. Um, I, too, have witnessed that sort of thing. And I know that I was a little bit older than Julia. Um, my response was a lot more volatile than hers. But um, that said... Um, the I, I think I breezed through it in a couple of days. The pacing was amazing. The story is just fantastic. The idea of time getting longer, um, hoping that somebody's going to save you. What's you know the government doing? But it's all through the eyes of Julia, so we're not too far removed. Um, and yeah, I thought it was really really good. So I definitely want to check out if Karen has written any more and pick up some more of her books if possible. I'll check it out. But yeah, The Age of Miracles. And the next book I had read was The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Uh, this follows Alice. She spent most of the life on the road with her mother because bad luck seems to follow them around. Um, one day, um, her mother is abducted. It says this on the back of the book. It's not really a spoiler, like I've said before. Um, and she gets one message telling her to stay away from the Hazelwood. The Hazelwood was a ride. Um, there were... There was a little, there was some bits in it that um, I wasn't keen on, but I can't quite remember what they were now. I should have, should have jotted them down. Hang on. I may have them. The Hazelwood. Ah, that's it. So I found it, you know, um, it was a bewitching, and I use that word, a mix of old and new storytelling. I don't want to go in, go into too much detail because I don't want to give it away, um, but it there was some seriously dark moments um it was wonderful there was a lot of metaphors in this book um and some of them worked really well others just was like well it didn't make sense to me anyway and I really loved the ending of this book it just made so much sense um and I um I would really like to get it in hardback as well because I thought it was great I wasn't expecting to love it like I was but I did so I may track it down in hardback if it's not too expensive, because I don't need two copies of it, but um, I really did like it. So I'm going to see if Melissa Albert does anything, because what the story is actually about reminds me of uh, Michelle Harrison. Uh, like, although Michelle Harrison writes for younger readers, the other Alice and the Hazelwood really have so much in common. So I think recommendation if you like the Hazelwood try The Other Alice by Michelle Harrison. But yeah, I really did like this. Next up, if you follow me on Instagram, thank you, hello. Um, I, as you know, I tend not to buy new books. Um, there is nothing wrong with buying new books. Um, generally they're hardback and they're more expensive. Um, and I am a cheap ass, so. But this one came out and of course I rushed to buy it. The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. And I think I've said briefly on this channel before that I really liked The Handmaid's Tale, but I, I, wasn't, over, I, I wasn't overly keen on it. Um, the story I liked, but I couldn't quite get on with Margaret Atwood's writing, I think is what I said. But I've, I've since bought um, some of her poetry, some of her books. And anyway, I breezed through this in like, I can't remember. It didn't take me too long. Um, I think it took me maybe a week. It's a big book. So this follows three different women in the... Um, following around, I think it's Gilead, I haven't watched the actual programme, so my mum told me that's how it's pronounced, because she loves the programme, and um, we follow them, and we get the, the backstory of the Gilead, and the future, and I, I even put, I put on Instagram, when I was like this close to finishing, how tense it was, I was, I had to keep putting it down, I was just like, I can't, I can't do this, I can't do this, so I kept putting it down, and I was like, I've got to know, but it was just so tense for me. I don't know if every anyone else had that experience, but it was just so tense. 
Um, so yeah, I loved it. And I will buy it in paperback when it comes out. <laughs> um, I'm sure most people loved it, but I just, I was so engaged in it all the way through. It was fantastic. And then following on from that, because I pick my, my husband picks my next read out of my TBR jar, which is, oh, you can't see it. Hold on. I've shown you before. It's way up there. So uh, the next one was apparently um, holds its own alongside the dark intentions of Margaret Atwood and Ray Bradbury. And that was When She Woke by Hilary Jordan. Um, this follows, I can't remember her name, and I've literally just finished it, Hannah. Um, so she um, is a chrome. Um, chromes are people that are colour coded, literally they are changed um, of their natural colour to a red, yellow, blue, green, depending on the severity of their crime. Red chromes are murderers. And um, it says that on the book, on the back, um, her victim, it says the state of Texas, was her unborn child. I'm not in Texas, I'm not in America, but I know that there's a lot going on there in, re you know, in reference to women's bodies. So um, it was so startling to read it because in the book um, they even say about, you know, um, there's, there's no concessions, I think that's the right word to use and it doesn't offend, um, for rape or incest or the health of the mother. It is, you're pregnant, you have it, um, the baby, it, sorry it's a touchy subject isn't it so but and I was like oh my goodness you know um so I thought very brave of Hillary to tackle such subject and I, I thought for the first half of the book she did a wonderful job um I was engrossed I was really rooting for Hannah um and we follow her she's um she's a um she's believes God um she follows she goes to church with the family um you know, so not only is this, you know, a crime, it's a fall from grace. Um, so, and yeah, so the first half of the book, I really, really liked. But for me, the second half of the book was just so much mirandering, so much wandering. Um, I didn't really understand the point um, of the second half of the book. Uh, I know that's going to sound so severe and I don't mean it to sound severe. I just really liked the beginning of the book so much that the second just seemed to taper off a little for me. Um, yeah, it was a shame. But I did, I would recommend it still. Um, I still think it's a really good book. Um, it just, the ending wasn't for me. Simple as that. And the last book I read was sent to me to uh, read and leave a review on Amazon, which I have done so. And that was an ebook. I read an ebook on my phone. Who knew? And that's The Crowlands by T.M. Creedy. Um, he will never let them leave. And uh, this is about a young woman that takes a house sitting job in Australia. Um, the house used to be used for the housing of children and strange things go on. Um, there are other aspects of the, the story. Um, the author really well written um and there is some really creepy moments none that I was like I'm not going upstairs to pee creepy but I was like oh I could see it the imagery and I was like that's really creepy just little bits I loved it um and I couldn't I couldn't read it fast enough either I really enjoyed it I loved all the characters in the book um had, again I had a couple of inklings about some things and I was like they came through I was like <laughs> um I think, what did I say? There was just some parts of the story that didn't gel that well with me. I, I, I said that in my review on Amazon. Um, yeah, it, it kind of mixed a little bit of two genres, um, a little bit. And I can understand why, because it really, I don't want to go into too much because I don't want to ruin it if you read it. Because um, it's it, the reasoning for her to go to Australia. So it is needed, but it just didn't feel right to me anyway. Um, but really well written nonetheless. Anyway, so I've babbled on for almost 15 minutes. So that's my September wrap up. I'm looking forward to October. Um, I'm going to put together a new TBR for October. And again, my husband will pull them because all of my horror books have been abandoned recently. Not because I'm not enjoying horror, but because everything's in the jar. If I don't pull a horror book, they're not getting read. And, um, you know, horror books and ghost stories are like some of my favourite stories. So I'm like, 
yeah, let's just do it in October like everyone else is doing in October. So hopefully my October rack up, rack, rack up, wrap up will be full of spookies. I'm not sure. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and listening to me babble. And uh, I'll be back, no doubt, in about five minutes with a haul. Sorry. <laughs>